All right. I was preparing Velby's bio from his about page, and it was so long with all his accomplishments. I just narrowed it down. Um, just basics. Velby grew up in New Jersey as an Orthodox Jew. He told me this. He went to the University of Pennsylvania, and from there, he went into the film industry. He told me he has two careers, one that pays, which is film, and one he does for free, which is music and photography. And as a filmmaker, he's produced hundreds of broadcast commercials for Industrial Light and Magic and has a long list of clients. There's just a few, Coca-Cola, Nike, Volkswagen, Jeep, Disney, and many more. In the music world, he has done videos for um, Nirvana, R.E.M., Ludacris, Randy Jackson, Mofro, Beso Negro, and Primus. And as a director, he has won a Golden Gate Award in the San Francisco International Film Festival. And his commercial work has won a Matelli Award, as well as Art Direction Magazine's Best Spot of the Year. So with all that said, we are really lucky to have Belby tonight presenting to our little club. I'm going to right. hand it over. Some of that's kind of true. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's a lot of, a lot of, uh, uh, so, Small exaggeration. Whoops. Bill, the I. It's it's lar it's largely true, um, and I guess what that really points to is how old I am. <laughs> if nothing else, I've had a, a long career in the film business, and um, uh, and I lived in Fairfax for a long time. Uh, my wife Jenny, who's on this call, and I uh, lived here in Fairfax for seventeen years, and uh, a couple years ago we sold our house and moved to Bali for a while. And then we came back from Bali after six months and uh, we moved uh, first to San Anselmo and now we live up in Grass Valley. And uh, I was telling Stephanie, we have a, a beautiful old house in Grass Valley, but I very much miss Marin and I come down here quite a lot. And, uh, and right now I'm in Fairfax. So um, first of all, uh, I want to just say how, uh, with no hyperbole, how flattered I am to be, <laughs> to be asked to present to you guys. Uh, you know, I, first of all, I hold Stephanie in such great regard. But also, um, you know, I'm not really a professional photographer, and I just sort of do photography for fun. Uh, and um, it's just really flattering to sort of get this kind of attention. And uh, I appreciate uh, that. And the fact that you guys are all here to listen to what I have to say. So so thank you all for in advance for your attention and, and for showing up. Um, so, um, gosh. Uh, my, my, my film work that Stephanie mentioned, I'm, I'm a film director and I do a lot of, these days, a lot of corporate work, um, but I've been doing film work for, for uh, 35 years plus. Uh, and um, a lot of my film work, I don't actually shoot. Uh, I'm a director or producer, usually directing now. And a lot of what I do uh, when I go on set is set up shots. You know, uh, we shoot a lot on location, uh, documentary style kinds of things. And a lot of times what I have to do when I show up is to sort of look at a scene and figure out where the camera is going to go and how to make the shot beautiful. And I think that my um, my photography experience has been really uh, important in that um, in that way of sort of trying to look at a scene and make something uncluttered and visually beautiful and to bring the viewer's eye towards whatever the subject is. Um, so a lot of what I'm going to talk about today is just sort of uh, composition, and I'm going to show you a lot of pictures. Uh, I think I have about 200 slides to show you guys. So, um, and I, I, I timed this presentation out. It takes about 40 minutes. So uh, before you get terrified of 200 slides, I should be done in about 40 minutes. So, um, so why don't we just start? I'm going to share my screen. Um, oh, and by the way, I'll, I'll just run through this. And please save questions. We have time at the end for any questions you have. I'm happy to go back and talk about any specific images or techniques or anything you guys are are, uh, are interested in but um but uh i will um i'll take questions at the end so uh, you know when i when stephanie first asked me to do this uh this talk i thought that um i thought i would talk about um photo editing lightroom i use lightroom uh everything almost everything you're going to see today that i've that, that i'm going to show you of my work has gone through lightroom in some respect or, or another and it's not um, it's not like Instagram where you, I don't know how many of you guys, of you guys use Lightroom, but it's not like applying filters and, and looks to things. It's much more like, um, like working in a dark room where you have, um, you have, uh, ability to lighten and darken things, to play with contrast, to mask certain areas. Um, and I have a lot of, uh, early photography experience in the dark room. I did a lot of work in film 
and printing in the dark room. And I think my approach to, uh, to photography now um, uses a lot of dark room techniques and ideas to sort of bring the pictures out. Um, my, my approach really is, is that when, when, when I shoot a picture, um, it's really just the start of the process. It's almost like I see something and I see the potential of it. Um, and then I manipulate it to sort of bring out what, what I think is a beautiful picture. Uh, and, and that's really what I'm trying to do is just make, just make beautiful pictures. I don't have any political agenda or, or um, social agenda with these things. I'm really just trying to make art, you know, uh, without a lot of um, uh, agenda behind it. So I'll talk about that as well as we go on. So let me, let me start. Uh, uh, so, so what else? Sorry. <laughs> so Stephanie, so I thought I'd do a demo of, of Lightroom and how I use it. And then Stephanie said, people are going to want to know what makes you tick. Like what, what, what brought you to photography? Um, and so I kind of changed my approach a little bit and I'm going to show you really kind of my progress through, through 35 or 40 years of shooting pictures and what, and what I see now and why I do it and how I do it. And then at the end, I'll show you some Lightroom stuff, just some, some, some comparisons, and then I'm happy to take questions at the end. So this is not gonna be really a technical demo of how to, how to um, uh, actually create uh, Lightroom manipulations. It's really, uh, but you will see what I do. Okay, I'm gonna, enough uh, hyperbole and I mean, enough uh, introduction, let me share my screen and um, I will start presenting. So let me go full screen here. Okay, you guys all seeing Fairfax Photo Club? Yes, Stephanie, thumbs up. You're seeing that? My, my yeah. screen is shared. Yeah, and, and um, yeah, I see it. Belby, uh, yeah. I, I just saw something of Robert Powell. I assume he's, I, I know him, but I can't find his email. It looks like he's trying to get in. Did, did you invite him? I did invite him, yeah. Do you have his email? Or maybe, Jenny, do you have it? And I'll, I'll take care of it while we're... Sure. I, I, um, I, can, I can actually I can actually text the meeting info to him. Thank you. I'll handle it. Thanks. I can't find where it went. So. Okay. So, um, why photography? You're so, not sharing uh, yet. You're not sharing. I'm not sharing. No. I should be. I no. see it. W. Gene Smith. Why yes. photography? Yeah. 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 Why yeah. photography? Perfect yeah. Photo Club. I see it too. Yeah. I see it. Oh, I see him. Sorry about that. Okay. There we okay. go. So um, how did I get into photography? Why did I choose photography to, as something to do? Um, I went to college, as Stephanie mentioned, in Philadelphia. And when I was a senior in college, um, I had a job for the art history department. And that job was I drove a van <laughs> for the art history department. And for kids who were taking art history, I would drive them down to the Philadelphia Art Museum uh, back and forth so they could do, uh, you know, they'd have a lecture at, at the college and then they would go down to the Museum of Art for a session with their, with their graduate student. And so, uh, you know, one or two days a week, I would drive, drive, be, be driving kids down to the Philadelphia Art Museum of Art. And um, I would drop them off and then I'd have 45 minutes to kill until uh, they were ready to go back to the, to the college. And uh, just completely randomly, while I was doing this job, um, at the Philadelphia Museum of Art, there was uh, an exhibit going on of, um, of W. Eugene Smith. And I'd never heard of him. I really didn't know anything about photography at that point. But I would just pop in because I had this time to kill. And I got very, very interested in his photography. And I don't know um, how much you guys know about him, but he was a, uh, a, a photo essayist for Life magazine. And he would take on a project and shoot shoot a, a project for a few weeks. He'd go to Pittsburgh or Japan or the South or and he would explore a certain subject or topic. And then he would make a 10, 15, 20 photo essay that would run in Life magazine. And um, his stuff was both political um, and uh, social, but it was also beautiful. His printing and his, his exposures were incredible. And I just was really taken by his work. So I'll hear some of the, the pictures, some of the most famous pictures of his. These are miners in, in, um, in England, uh, coal miners. And as you go through, um, you know, I'm going to go, I'm going to show my work later. And I'm going to refer back to some of these pictures uh, because they really, really influenced my idea of of composition. And this is one that I'm going to definitely refer back to. Um, he did a photo essay about a Southern doctor who made house calls. Um, and one of the famous cases that he did was he, he, um, uh, he worked on a, a young girl who'd been kicked in the head by a horse. 
uh, and he had to stitch up her forehead. And this is him at, you know, in the kitchen of her house after stitching her up. And uh, I don't have any photos of this today, but my brother is a surgeon. And when I lived in New York, I used to go with him to the operating room and shoot him actually doing surgery. And I, I couldn't find those pictures for this presentation, but maybe, maybe, uh, maybe uh, I could find some for another date. But um, I just love this sort of late at night feeling of like tired, he's worked hard. He's also a doctor having a cigarette and coffee. I love that too. Um, uh, Eugene Smith did a, 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 an essay about a, a Southern um, midwife and she would go uh, uh, sort of post slavery and go to these poor uh, women's homes and deliver their babies in the middle of the night and a beautiful, beautiful photo essay. Um, Again, beautiful composition, all available light, no flash. These are just like the light of the lantern and maybe the, the overhead light of, of, a, um, of, the, uh, of the porch that the, the, the woman's standing in. Um, Eugene Smith was in Spain. This is an essay he did um, about uh, a, a, a town in Japan where people had been poisoned by a paper factory that was dumping mercury into the water. And a lot of kids were born with, uh, with mercury poisoning birth defects. And, uh, and again, the photography, is, I just love the sort of the quality of light and the, the, the just the, the, the heartbreakingness of the, of the pictures. Um, this is actually the place where, where the water was poisoned. You can see fishermen doing their work. A, a, um, a, a funeral in Spain, a, 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 not a, a wake in Spain. Um, this picture uh, sifting, sifting uh, grain. And I have a picture just like this, which so I'm gonna refer back to this one as well. Um, Henry Cartier Brisson, I'm sure you guys have heard of him. He was famous for what they call the decisive moment. Um, and so his pictures were very, they were, they were kind of timed perfectly. This is kind of the most famous one of like a guy jumping over a puddle and this and, and uh, super complex image in terms of so many things going on here, but the composition is perfect. You just get it instantly. And it's, it's a moment, like a split second later, this picture didn't exist. Um, but what I loved about, about Cartier-Bresson was like his sense of composition. And I'll show you a few now that like, here's, uh, these pictures are, they're these, they're these, um, these moments, but the composition of, of, of the stairs pointing to the bike and the curve of the, of, the, of the street is just perfect. And I just had the feeling he would just wait there at these, at these composed spots and wait for something to happen. Um, so th this kind of composition is very, very interesting to me. Same thing here. Um, uh, light and shadow, stairs, geometry, and the girl kind of walking up the stairs in the back. Uh, again, a, a, a perfect moment, but the photo is actually superimposed. Uh, another very famous one that I'll refer back to, windows, kids playing, uh, uh, big fat guy. It's just such, a, such an incredible picture. Uh, also very famous. Um, this is, uh, a lot of my pictures look like this. Look like, look, have, have geometry that looks like this, that have these diagonal lines that sort of spread out um, and divide up space. And I'm gonna talk a lot about that, but I'll refer back to this one later as well. Same thing with this. Here's, here's another Cartier-Bresson image that is not uh, a decisive moment at all, but it's just a, a, a kind of a perfect composition um, of, of foreground, background, lines dividing up space and a lot and a very uncluttered, um, a very uncluttered kind of composition. And then I'm gonna refer back to this one as well. Just people on an escalator and check out the way these these diagonal lines are just kind of breaking up the frame and a lot of my pictures um i don't know if it was because of this or i was attracted to this but this is really one of the things that i kind of do most in my photography sort of uh, geometric and and perspective kind of uh flattening like this um dorothy lang you probably know about her she was a, a wpa photographer this is probably her most famous image uh, she did a lot of portraiture uh, of um, the South uh, and, the, and the Midwest during the WPA. Um, but what I loved of her work was also her sort of um, her, uh, again, her, her geometric compositions of taking these very mundane scenes and breaking them up with lines and, and the way objects broke the sky. Um, just a really interesting way of looking at something that, that, that could be very, very boring or a, a, a very graphic sense. Um, and then, of course, her window light, you know, the use of available light and uh, some of my pictures you'll see have this kind of quality as well of obviously a window that you don't see, but it's, it's this uh, super directional light and it just has this, it's actually a very hard picture to make and to print. There's so much, there's so much um, uh, discrepancy between the light and the dark and this is just so beautifully done. 
Uh, and then lastly, uh, Robert Frank's book, The Americans. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that book or not, but Robert Frank did a book in the 50s of really, it was really just kind of documentary photography of American life. And it was very unglamorous, um, but, but super, super uh, great compositions. Um, this one's really interesting. It's uh, every one of these windows is like a different social class. Um, uh, and, um, but also just perfectly composed. Um, I love these that have these angles. Um, you know, this could have been shot just flat on, but the fact that he, he dutched the camera a little bit and that bench sort of goes off down to the right, it just adds so much life to a, to what could have been just a very boring image. So, so those, those are, are, were my, the, the photographers that I was interested in when I first started learning about photography. Um, so when I graduated college, my father got me a camera and I started shooting a lot of film, black and white film, and I would process my own film and I would print in, I made a dark room in my bathroom in New York City and I would do my own uh, processing and printing. Um, and I was doing a lot of traveling in those days. I was um, obviously a lot younger. This was uh, the uh, late eighties and early nineties. So I started doing a lot of portraiture work um, with a, a Nikon F3 camera, you know, a, a, a very heavy, big 35 millimeter camera, but shooting film. And I would shoot uh, a lot of film out, out in my travels and then bring it back to the States and process it and, and do printing. So I'm gonna show you a whole series of, of um, portraits that I shot sort of coming out of those, those pictures that I just showed you um, and that I printed and toned. And I got really into the whole, the whole process of, first of all, meeting people and shooting them. I didn't steal any pictures. I would always ask, you know, you'll see there, there's kind of formal portraits, um, but also the, the whole process of going through of the shooting and then the dark room work and the printing. So this is, um, this is in, uh, in Bolivia on, on, on a floating island on Lake Titicaca. And I don't know what these guys were doing, but they were just really, really interesting. Uh, I was there with my wife, Jenny, uh, and, we, and, um, and we also got bit by dogs on this day. And we got dogs chased us and bit us in the ass both, which was a beautiful moment. Um, this is in Burma. And this picture, this one kind of compositionally reminds me of the, of the miners in um, uh, the, the first picture I showed you guys of Eugene Smith, like the, the, the low foreground person in the front and then a high a uh, high architectural object in the back. And this one, um, I'd met this monk the day before. And, uh, and every time I'd say something that he didn't understand, he would throw his head back and laugh. And I convinced him somehow to come out in the rice fields with me uh, the next day. And I tried to just get him to laugh and set up this shot. And I have about two rolls of film of, of different, uh, different uh, aspects of him laughing. But this is the one that I kind of ended up with. And, and, um, and these, these fields behind him are, are, are flooded with rice. Um, and this is kind of the dry season. When, uh, when the wet season came, this monastery back there would actually be, uh, it's on stilts. And uh, this whole thing would be a lake. Um, so this was, this was a, a big process to sort of get him, you know, a half mile from this, uh, from this monastery to make this picture. And this is probably my most, my most published picture. Uh, some magazines picked this up and they use it a lot for, uh, for different um, mailers they do, but I've, I've gotten a lot of traction out of this image. Um, this is Nepal. And uh, this was a, a, a hiking guy that I had up near, near Everest. And you can see that sort of window light. Uh, you can feel the sort of particulate of, of this wood burning stove in an interior space. You feel how cold it is, uh, him holding a, a cup of tea. Um, and uh, again, I think this is sort of that, if you think back to that uh, Dorothy Lang image of the girl crouching on the bed uh, and the window light coming in, this is kind of reminiscent of that. Uh, this is in Ecuador, a weaver, uh, again, with the, that, that really strong window light. This is, um, this is on the Varanasi River. This is on the, the Ganges River in Varanasi, India. Um, let Sandra in. Um, this is in Nepal, uh, a religious ceremony that was going on that they let me sort of hang around outside and, and a, sort of a Hindu um, evening puja. This is in uh, the high Andes in, in, uh, in Peru. This is also in Peru in the Sacred Valley, and this this guy was blind. Um, and I, I love this picture. I love that the I mean, knowing where it's from, uh, and knowing that these are gigantic Incan stones that were that were placed here without cement. And this picture just like tells me a lot about about that whole 
that place and again the coldness of it the wool hat and uh um this is on the ganges in india an early morning boatman in the fog we couldn't see anything we actually ran into another boat and knocked a guy into the water <laughs> um this is um in nepal uh and I, I hear i'm starting to start play with these these diagonals and and um sort of in that cartier bresson style putting sort of a, a human figure in the in the lower corner um, and you'll see a lot of this coming up. I do this a lot. It's just like I'll shoot, I'll set up an architectural shot, and then I'll wait for 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 a bicycle or a person on a cart or something to sort of come into a corner, and it gives it sort of scale and and context. Um, this is a cigar lady in Burma, um, uh, a monk who is out for his a boy monk uh, out for his. They they go around with the bowl in the morning. This is in Mandalay, Burma, and uh, ask people for, for alms donations, they have no money, um, and they just survive by going around and asking uh, people for, for uh, donations every morning. Um, this is my Indonesian picture uh, that's like the Eugene Smith sifting grain picture, but I definitely had that in mind when I shot this. Um, more rice fields, and this is Laos, Burma, cigar ladies. These are guys that I met in Ecuador that were drunk as skunks <laughs> they could barely walk but they let me take their picture you can tell how close i am by the way you know these are, these are very wide lens pictures i'm probably shooting with a, a 24 or 28 fixed lens and getting very close to people these are extremely you know confrontational images um this one i love this is in nepal and this one for me is reminiscent of that that bresson picture uh, with the windows and the kids playing in the foreground and the fat guy there's just sort of a lot of action and motion but it also has this very interesting um uh geometry and uh an uncentered composition so I, I really this one sort of reminds me of that um as as and i realized that as i was putting these together i didn't think of that at the time but um this is a uh, another one of these uh sort of person in the corner pictures this is a canoe guy in um in uh, outside of poker in nepal uh just canoeing home after after a day in the fields um Kids and cows on the street in Varanasi, India. The, the kids there uh, have eye makeup, which I thought was very interesting. And this is uh, in Moscow um, at uh, in Red Square. And I just put this one in because I just wanted to show that uh, I was shooting a lot of infrared film at the time also, which was really um, a very interesting process. You had to shoot it with a dark red filter um, and the exposures were crazy and the negatives were very hard to work with. But I think this is probably the, the most interesting picture I ever made with infrared film, but it had a very, dreamy quality the grain structure was totally different and you'd get this very dreamy um look from infrared okay so so those those, those are uh th those were all shot on film they're all uh printed in the dark room on paper with chemistry um and uh and i love that um uh now what i what i've been doing for the past i don't know probably 10 plus years is shooting with an iphone and it's a totally different thing when I shoot with the iPhone, I just sort of walk around and I'm not looking for pictures. When I walked around with a camera, you know, with a camera, a big Nikon camera around my neck, I was looking for imagery. I had a camera and film in it and I had to judge whether this is a picture or not. And it was a very sort of involved process of thinking about um, looking for looking for things to shoot and going for going places to shoot with my iPhone. Um, I find it's much more observational. I'm just somewhere and I notice things which I'll talk about. The other thing I want to mention is that um, for my photography, um, I'm not really that concerned with realism in terms of like having it be realistic and so, and and have it be exactly what I saw. Uh, for me, it's much more um, it's much more about making pretty pictures and interesting imagery, and I think that's just sort of this discussion that happens between journalists and artists. And uh, you know, when you're doing journalism, I think it's really ethical and important to sort of not manipulate the images too much um and and keep things sort of true to what what the camera saw and that's not what i do <laughs> so so if you're going to be offended by um by um um image manipulation um i'm just telling you right out of the gate i'm not making any any uh, uh pretense about about um uh making realistic images so um with so what, what now what i realize is that as opposed to looking for pictures there are just a few things that I notice as I walk around, you know, just wherever I am, I just, there are certain things that just pop out to me. I'm like, I notice, oh, that's a picture. That's a picture. That's, I just notice certain 
um, theme, certain visual things. And I'm going to show you three different things that I notice all the time that I shoot all the time. Um, and one of them is clouds. I'm very interested in clouds. And I've shot a lot of time lapse photography in my film work. And uh, I notice clouds all the time, the size and scale, wh which way they're moving, are they moving in different directions, how fast they're going, um, size, lighting. Um, so I have a lot of pictures just that, 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 um, that sort of, I'd say, highlight clouds. And I'll just run you through a bunch of these things. So when I see a cloud picture, when I, when I see a, an interesting cloud um, scene, I'll often shoot it and almost always knowing that I'm going to go to black and white. Uh, clouds to me look great in black and white, and um, I often uh, know that I'm going to black and white. So um, this last one was, was in Ohio. This is up in Eureka. My daughter goes to college in, um, in Arcata, and we were in Eureka for a day, and the clouds were fantastic. So I, that's there. This is, uh, I was with my wife, Jenny. She's actually in the left-hand corner of this picture. This is in, um, in Lisbon. This is Martha's Vineyard. Uh, again, clouds are reflected in water. Um, this is this summer, this past summer in Rome, um, more Ohio. This is Jenny again in Martha's Vineyard and just this, you know, wide scene with, with a, a, a cloud backdrop. Here's Jenny. You're going to see a lot of Jenny, by the way. Uh, Jenny, did you know that? You're going to be in here a lot. Uh, this is Jenny and Martha's Vineyard this summer. Uh, this is Point Reyes. This is right down in downtown Fairfax, right, right near the Fairfax Theater. Uh, this is in Bali. This is uh, on the hill in San Anselmo. This is our house in Grass Valley. Um, the lower left is, is our, our, our old house and incredible clouds up there. This is the church in, uh, in Nicasio um, that I've been shooting. I've been shooting pictures of this church for 30 years. I have hundreds of pictures of this church. And every time I go there, I, I, there's something different that it's like a challenge. I, I drive up and I think, am I going to see it differently today? And uh, so this was just just a few weeks ago. I shot this one. Um, this is on Martha's Vineyard this past summer. And I know Sandy Hancher had a question about this one. Sandy, I'm going to talk more about how how I made this picture later. But I know this was one that caught your eye uh, when I put it on Facebook. Uh, this is Point Reyes. This is San Anselmo. This is Bali. This is right. This is we, uh, Jenny and I lived about 100 yards from from this place in Bali, and I spent a lot of time. Um, on these rice paddies do, shooting time-lapse photography. Um, this is another Martha's Vineyard picture, and I'm going to talk more about this one again later. Um, but I'm kind of using the clouds here as almost a compositional aspects to kind of like bring your eye to the, to the subject. Um, okay, what else do I notice? I notice color, and I think everyone probably does. I think the challenge with color is how do you, sit, how do you make a, um, a complex color scene graphically simple? and enjoyable and not just a, a, a clutter of, of color. Um, so this is, um, this is at the Vatican uh, this past summer, uh, it's this past April. Um, these are a stairwell in, in, the, in the Vatican. This is on our hill in San Anselmo. This was in the actually the, uh, the open space calendar this year, this past year. Um, I was just in Tokyo and, and in Osaka, Japan. This is Osaka. This is a cigarette machine in Osaka sideways. I, I love the uh, the, all, all the different cigarette labels. Um, I went to a town called Nara, which has thousands and thousands of deer. <laughs> and I don't really know why, because a lot of things in Japan I didn't understand and there was, and I couldn't ask and I didn't know who to ask, but this town had a, had a hell of a lot of deer. And I just love this sort of composition of bricks and blue and then brown and Japanese type and these three deer um, hanging out. Um, I've only put this one in because these pictures kind of came up on Facebook this week. A bunch of people were posting pictures of this boat out in, um, in, on, uh, in Inverness, and I had some interesting color pictures there. Um, this is a lightning shot from Bali, um, and I can tell you guys, I don't know if you know how to shoot lightning or not, but I really like that too. But this one I love just from the, 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 that sort of dusky blue sky and the green tropical foliage below and the sort of yellow light coming out of a little, a little uh, restaurant down below. Uh, this is one of our first nights living in Bali, and uh, I was like, oh, this is going to be, this is going to be fun. Uh, this is Vietnam, and you, man, you see a wall like this and a woman in a purple shirt, I think, uh, I think everyone would shoot this. Uh, more, more uh, Vietnam, uh, the blue doors and the, and the yellow hat. Um, this is in Palermo, Sicily, um, 
and I like this is another one where where I, I you know I kind of set the shot up before the woman was coming and then as she came I just shot a burst with the iPhone and and I got this composition uh, similar similarly this one uh, Palermo um, Sicily I love the green and the yellow the green shawl and the yellow building and then the the mask and then the, the Muslim hijab it's it's such an interesting picture um, this is Rome. And I think anyone would shoot this also. If you if you saw this, you would shoot it too. Uh, but it's the color, you know. It's it's the sort of the blue against these these yellow buildings. This is downtown San Francisco. This is um, uh, Osaka, New York City. You know, look. I was on a, a film shoot there, and I looked out the window, and there was this just incredible color array uh, and reflections. This is um, uh, in Portugal. Portugal, Portugal, Stephanie, this one's for you. I know you like the animal pictures. <laughs> um, this is this is uh, Porto. Um, this was taken around. Uh, my, uh, Jenny and I uh, walked across this bridge at, at maybe midnight, and uh, and the water, the the river had settled down. The boats weren't there anymore, and it was just such a beautiful. You know, so there was reflections, and it was really a spectacular scene. Uh, this is in uh, Porto as well. This is uh, uh, Portugal. This is Sintra. This is London. This is in uh, in Chiang Mai, Thailand. Again, the, the sort of the, the figure in, in the low, in the corner that just sort of gives it something. You know, I could have just shot the building, but you know, here's a here's a, a monk in in in, in orange. It, it adds so much. This tiny little detail adds so much uh, character to the picture. Okay, lines and spaces. So as I mentioned earlier. Um, I think probably the thing that I, if, if someone was to describe my photography, this is probably the thing that most people would would identify as um, as characteristic of my work is 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 these angles I, I use, I, dividing up spaces with with perspective, um, going corner to corner. Um, so I'm just going to run you through a, a bunch of pictures, but I want you to notice, um, like in something like this, I when I'm doing these diagonals and breaking up these like flattening these three D spaces into two D. A lot of what makes them uh, compositionally interesting is actually running things right into the corners. This one is almost exactly in the lower right hand corner, but it comes out of the corner and it spreads out into space. And I'm going to point out a lot of these pictures have that that kind of compositional idea of going out of the corners or into the corners. And it just sort of I feel like it makes the frames really dynamic. Um, and I just like doing it. I, you know, I don't know if I, maybe there isn't a reason, but but uh, it, it, it works for me. Um, this is the George Washington Bridge uh, this, uh, where I grew up. Uh, I walked over this bridge many, many times. Uh, I grew up just on the other side of this bridge in New Jersey. And if I missed the last bus at night, I would have to walk over this bridge in, in the snow or, you know, so I have, I have a lot of deep feelings about this bridge. Um, this is in the Embarcadero Center. And this is not, this is a very uncasual composition. You can see like the, the circles on the left and the right, lower lower left and the right, the, that sort of uh, V shape that comes right out of the center. And that's kind of mirrored at the top. Um, so this is definitely set up to be a very symmetrical picture. Um, here is, um, check out, you know, the line, the diagonal line of the, uh, of the, um, the um, screens of the urinals, but also the, the lines on the floor. I, I oftentimes notice the line, the, the floor patterns. Uh, you'll see a bunch of that, and then and then a guy, you know, which which makes it not just a landscape. It gives it some kind of um, size and scale context and a little bit of, of activity. Um, this is a bridge uh, near a, 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 a historic covered bridge near where we live in Grass Valley, and I'll just point out here. Check out the upper left and right hand corners. Like the beams are coming right out of those corners. And I didn't necessarily shoot. I knew that I was going to do that. Uh, I can't always do it in camera, but this is something that I would do in, in cropping. You know, when I'm ed editing the photo, I oftentimes will crop and put things right out of the corners. And I think that just makes for, you just feel like, I think it makes you feel like you're there. Um, again, this is the New York City Reservoir in Central Park. Check out the, the, this, um, uh, fence, this, whatever this is, this guardrail coming right out of the lower left-hand corner. Uh, and of course, some clouds and what I call Jesus rays, which are always always bonus. Um, I'm just going to uh, flip through these. 
again, check out the lower right hand, lower left hand corner that 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 um that wooden plank is coming right out of the corner. So this is not casual. These are these are like little tricks that I have uh, that I think make the pictures interesting. But they, they uh, you know, it, 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 I think I think uh, it's a nice it's a nice idea. Um, I just shot this two days ago. I got a haircut in Fairfax and I was sitting there waiting uh, uh, for the haircut to finish. And I just noticed this great floor and um, and the way all these lines were kind of converging at at the, the guy getting a haircut. If you see the, the, the top walls are coming down here to this, whoops. Hello, sorry. Uh, to this, this here, everything is sort of leading to the subject. Um, so this is another case of like using these diagonals to kind of bring your eye to an interesting subject. And I'll, I'll, I'll show you a before and after of this um, a little later uh, about how I manipulated it. And if you look over here, here I am, this is me over here shooting. That's, that's an action photo of me, very impressive. Um, this is on that bridge in, um, in Porto that I showed you earlier, the reflections, but this is one where I'm using the, the, um, those perspective lines in kind of a perfect uh, uh, two-point perspective vanishing point. And this is a, a shot about symmetry. A lot of things I don't do are symmet I, I don't do a lot with symmetry, partly because that's one of the things that I have a really hard time with the iPhone. I find that that not looking through, not, it's not an SLR and you're not, it's very hard to get things not to be a little bit skewed. Even when I think I've lined them up to be very geometrically perfect, when I look at the picture later, there's something wacky about it. So I don't often do um, symmetry, but this one, I did it and it worked. Um, train tracks, I love again because of these. I mean, check out these lines. Um, you know the way that the vanishing point and uh, so much interest and in texture here. Another one, uh, kind of the same idea. Um, here's a here's a sort of a larger landscape, New York City, um, and you know these buildings are are super complex shapes. Look, check out the the facades of these buildings. There's so there's so much going on. But I tried to set it up in a way where the shapes had this kind of diagonal, you know, perspective going down here and check out this building on the upper right, you know, the way that's kind of sloping down. So again, this is just an interesting way of taking a, a three dimensional space and when you compress it into a, into a 2D image, you, um, I just find these kinds of, of angles and, and, and uh, space compressions really interesting and, and beautiful. Um, and I do it and you can do it in nature as well. This one, I, I, I see this one as a big X, you know, uh, 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 the, the mountains coming down on either side and then the, uh, the rocks on the lower left coming up, the water on the lower right coming up and it makes a, 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 a like a little vanishing point right here. But, but to me, this picture is just like, a, like an X a, a, a compositionally. Uh, and then I got to have some pictures of Jenny on a diagonal in water. Um, these are, um, from Osaka, uh, these freeways were just amazing to me. Uh, again, breaking up spaces. Um, uh, this is um, in Osaka. Are you guys seeing? Can you see the woman on the right of this thing? Are you seeing that? Or are you are they covered up by, by mine? Are covered up by people? So this is one that I could have shot flat, um, but but instead, you know, uh, I was able to sort of cant it a little bit and use the lines on the street and the the, the, the crosswalk lines. And the perspective of the street going down to sort of lead your eye to this interesting woman on an umbre with an umbrella. So, again, it's sort of a a, um, a geometric composition with with an interesting uh, uh, human uh, component in a corner. Um, more angles. Another classic. This is just like you know. This is a this could have been a totally flat picture, um, but I set it up as as a diagonal. To sort of break up the space, and then I waited for uh, some interesting uh, uh, people um, on the left side. So here's a woman with an umbrella and a, a dude driving away with a um, with a cart uh, on a bicycle, and you get this very dynamic composition um, that sort of comes out of the lower right hand corner and divides up this space. Okay, I'm, I think I'm I am repeating myself a lot now. I'll just show some pictures. Uh, this is a, a symmetry piece. Um, I'll just I'll just click through some. This is Osaka. Um, this is a yakitori restaurant that I went to and I sort of was just uh, having fun with the chef and I set up this picture and check it out. The, 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 um, the, 
the um, Yakitori uh, hibachi stove is coming right out of that lower right hand corner. And I think just having things sort of angle up and not be a flat picture gives this, for me, compositional interest. Um, and, and it simplifies it somewhat. Uh, another one, uh, uh, diagonal shape coming out of a corner and a person on the left. By the way, I didn't really know this until I looked through all my pictures. I'm like, oh shit, I do this all the time. Um, uh, this is Martha's Vineyard. Um, this is outside of Rome. This is in Bali. And uh, again, this is just my style, I guess, of coming out of that lower right hand corner and shooting a beach shot, um, you know, that, that divides the frame. You could look at this frame. Um, you could, it's literally divided in half, um, uh, you know, a diagonal top half and a diagonal lower half. A bridge in uh, in uh, over the Yuba. Again, check out the the top corners. Composition coming out of there. Uh, traffic lights. This is Atlanta. Traffic light coming right out of that corner and dividing up the space. And here's one that's interesting because I'm doing a diagonal here that's more implied. If you follow the line from the center of this uh, labyrinth through the tree up to the up to Mount Tam, again, this picture is 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 uh, divided. In half from from the lower left to the upper right, um, and this is the uh, my favorite church in Nicasio, and I'm going to talk to you more about this picture momentarily. But but I think you guys are getting uh, getting the, the idea. Um, again, lower left. Here's a rice field in Bali. Same same idea. Uh, diagonal composition and a, um, a, in, a person of interest. In the lower left, a rice farmer coming into the scene. O'Hare Airport. This is gasoline in Bali. When you, if you have a motorcycle or a scooter, you ride up to these cart, these uh, these little stands, and they pull one of these absolute vodka jars uh, bottles off of a shelf and pour this green gas into your gas tank. So I'm just going to click through these. Um, here's one with some symmetry of that my favorite church. Here's the Guggenheim in New York. Everyone shoots this. It's an amazing structure. Here's one of the first zigzag things. That, this is Point Reyes. And I saw this as like zig, zig, zig. I'm like, that's like a big Z. And I thought it was a really interesting way to divide up this space. And again, I could have shot it flat and, and normal, but this is such a, a for me, an interesting uh, perspective composition. Um, stairs. This is at the uh, San Mateo Community College, and of course you have to end. You have to start and end with with urinals and toilets. That's always always my rule. Um, and moving ahead a little bit, um, I think it's a really cool idea to use these uh, composition ideas and and vanishing point perspective things in portraiture. Um, so here's a few images uh, that I pulled, uh, mostly of my wife Jenny, um, and where I'm using. Um, that kind of uh, um, vanishing point stuff uh, in a portrait. So this is up in Arcata, and I love this one because of that road, just the, 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 the road going back into space just brings you right to Jenny up in the front. And even this little barn on the left with that, with that um, diagonal slope coming down uh, and, and the, uh, the phone lines up above, it's just got an incredibly deep linear feel um, of vanishing. Uh, here's my daughter, Zoe. Um, and I'm using the fence here in that same way of, of uh, uh, dividing up the space diagonally. Here's Jenny on a train in New York. Um, here's a subway shot in New York. But can, can you guys see what I'm talking? I, I hope I'm, not, I'm making the, 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 the graphic point here. Um, here's in a diner uh, in New Jersey. Uh, and I'm using that counter to, to do what the railroad tracks did or what the... Uh, here's... Um, I think it's 14th Street in, in New York City from the High Line. And again, using using the uh, that perspective vanishing point. I just shot a, an album cover for uh, an artist in, in uh, Oakland who's putting out an album. And we did a shoot in, uh, it, this is at the, the uh, Safeway on, a, on um, Solano Avenue in Berkeley. And we just ran in there and th th we did this shot in about literally one minute but the idea here was to use the the, sh the shelves uh, of the groceries as this vanishing point to bring to bring you to to the the, the subject. Um, okay, and um, of course, best of all is when 
the all these things that I notice uh, come together and you have color and clouds and divided up spaces and you end up with things like this. This is our, this is a, um, uh, in Eureka. Um, this is in Sicily, but here's, here's that diagonal uh, composition and color. Here's Jenny floating in the Yuba um, and the clouds. And again, trying to use a little bit of the diagonals here coming out of the corners. Um, this is New York City. These are just incredible clouds uh, on, um, on Route 20 near where we live um, and that road sort of going off. And we've all seen that picture, that classic picture of the, the road going off to infinity, but I love this one because it actually curves and, and you get to see cars going away. Um, this is in Japan. Um, this is Bali, diagonals, um, uh, color, human, human uh, aspect. This one, it's not the greatest picture, but I just wanted to, again, demonstrate that idea of, of using even something as mundane as a, 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 a water line um, that is not even have an interesting wave breaking or anything, just as a, a graphic uh, line, diagonal line to break up a space. So that I think that's that, that's an interesting part of this picture. And there's some cool cool clouds. Uh, I'm going to talk about this one later. This is um, in Lisbon. Uh, and we have some uh, interesting lines and some good color. Um, this is in Portugal as well. I love shooting ground tiles. I have a lot of pictures of that, that are uh, used these um, tiles. This is the, uh, the, the opera house in Palermo, Italy. Uh, a train station in Porto. Jenny on the steps and clouds uh, in Portugal. This is London. London, obviously. London, nighttime. Japan, symmetry shot in Japan. Martha's Vineyard. Oh, no, this is a, this is um, Bali. Um, okay, so that's that's pretty much the 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 portfolio section of this. I'm going to show you a little bit about Lightroom now and just what I do uh, to manipulate these pictures. Like I was saying earlier, every picture you've seen today has been manipulated. Nothing. Um, nothing that I've shown came out of the camera looking looking like I showed you. So I'm just going to show you some before and afters, and you can get an idea of, of of what I'm doing in Lightroom. So here's that here's that staircase at the Vatican. This one was actually one that I that I composed pretty much. The composition was set, but the color was not that interesting. So here's one where I used color correction to kind of you know make it really pop. A lot of contrast, um, bringing out the blues. Um, here's that that New York City image. Uh, that we just saw. Um, if you look at this, it's it's kind of a mundane shot, the one on the right. You wouldn't look at this and go, that's a really interesting picture. But I kind of saw it as like, oh, I can I know what I can do with that sky and the clouds. I see the reflections in the lake. I know I can compose this thing, you know, uh, crop in a little bit, cant it a little bit. And I think the image on the left ends up being a really a beautiful picture where the one on the right, you wouldn't even look at it twice. Uh, we saw this one. Here, here's the original. Um, Here's the barber shop uh, in Fairfax, and this is what it looked like when I was sitting there. But I, I just saw the graphic possibility here, um, the bridge in over the Yuba, and you can see that on this one I cropped in to sort of bring the those um, the cor the upper corners, uh, the, the lines coming right out of the corners. I I, cr I cropped in. This is kind of a little bit of a, of a um, Henry Cartier-Bresson shot because I set this thing up and I was waiting, I was just waiting for a, a streetcar to come through at the right moment. Um, and as you can see, uh, I brought out the color a lot, the shadow, um, and, um, and it has that sort of like motion at the bottom, a little bit of a streetcar coming through, but it's really a color shot. Um, Sandy Hancher asked me about this picture. I shot this from a, I was on a boat and I shot this one um just kind of seeing the, the potential of the sky and the clouds um but um you know i changed the cropping to sort of make it a, a more interesting composition and i did a lot of dark room work on this one you can see what i did with the clouds but I, another thing i want to point out that i that is, is, is a cool thing to do if you look at the water uh, in the, on the right hand image there's really no value change in the water at all it's just a kind of a flat blue and when i was working with the picture in lightroom um, down here, I darkened this side, this lower left, 
And then I made a mask over here and I lightened this up pretty significantly so that it felt like the light was hitting this boat, this ferry, and then reflecting back to us. Um, and that gives the picture a lot of value at the bottom, where if you look at the one on the right, it's the same image, but there's absolutely no light play on the water at all. So this is kind of a little bit like, you know, it's a little bit more of a painting discipline of so just sort of adding lights and darks to kind of um, add interest and, and uh, yeah. So I hope that that uh, um, here's uh, this. Uh, so this is a beautiful picture to start with. You know, the sky was fantastic. Um, but I had this idea of taking it into, into black and white and and upping the contrast on it. And it ends up being this almost like Madonna, like, you know, uh, <laughs> almost a religious image. Um, I love this one. Uh, so here's one that, that people might, might uh, I don't know, take, take issue with. Um, I showed you this picture. When I shot this picture, there were no clouds in the sky. This was the picture that I shot. And, um, and I took it into Lightroom and I was like, that sky needs some clouds. And I actually stole the clouds from another picture and composited them into the one on the left in black and white. And I think it makes a, a fantastic, pretty picture. But you know, I, I wouldn't submit this to a, a, a journalism contest or, or a newspaper because it's 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 uh, you know this goes for me this goes beyond um, you know uh, ethics. This is this is definitely a composition you know a a, a composite. Um, but I really love the picture. Uh, and as you can see, I, I you know it uses a lot of the things that I talked about uh, techniques. Uh, San Francisco, um, it looked pretty dull when I shot it. And then I, I, I brought up the, uh, the colors and the contrast. <laughs> so this scene on the right, I mean, it's not that amazing, uh, but when I cropped in and, 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 um, and, you know, brought the, that railway, that railing, the, the railings out of the corners, worked on the sky, black and whited, um, it kind of becomes a really, really cool image. Uh, here's a, a, a symmetrical one. We've all taken this picture on the right. That's a that's a just a classic, you know, iPhone tourist picture, um, and that's my presentation. <laughs> so, so um, I'm going to unshare my screen, and I am uh, happy to take any and any questions. Uh, first of all, thank you for the for the kind attention. Belvi, I have a question for you. Um, yeah. So you shot a lot of those with your cell phone. Are you working with them in your phone or are you working yeah. with them in your yeah. computer? I actually prefer the Lightroom interface on the phone, believe it or not. Uh, I, I just like, I like the way that uh, works. So I, I often do it on the phone and then I'll, I'll shoot it over to my, um, my uh, laptop or a desktop to sort of see it bigger. But I actually like working in Lightroom on the phone. Yeah. Velvy? Yes. Uh, Velvy short for Velvel? It is indeed, Marty. That's my father-in-law's name was Velvel. Right on. I'm so Wolf. happy to hear that. Wolf, exactly. My, my father's store in, uh, in New York City was Wolf Appleton, <laughs> named after his father, Velvel. Right on. I love it when someone knows that, Marty. Thank you. <laughs> is that hey, the question? Velvy. Yeah. Hi, Deb. Hi. Quick question. Um, so you're doing Lightroom on your phone, but when you get to desktop, what's the comparison between Lightroom and Photoshop? Are you do you find that you can get the same Photoshop, thing done? Or yeah, they 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 talk to each other. Um, Lightroom is made more for photographs, so there's a much more um, specific uh, color correction um, and uh, contrast controls. It has a it has a um a sharp a, a clarity function that I use a lot. Clarity. Um, it, it bumps up like sort of a micro contrast and makes things look sharper. Or you can, for portraiture, I'll often decrease the clarity um, so that people get a little bit more of a, of a softer skin look. Um, but there, but Photoshop I use for compositing. If I'm like that picture that I showed you with with with, with the church in the clouds, I composited that in Photoshop. But I did the color correction and the basic photo cropping and uh, look in in Lightroom. Um, right. Yeah. Does that make sense, Deb? It totally does. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I would say even in iPhoto, some of the things you can do yeah. there is 
far superior or it takes like lots of hoops to jump through in Photoshop. So yes, it, 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 for, you know, uh, my wife works for Adobe. I don't want to be too, too, uh, too <laughs> dismissive. These are not easy programs to learn. I, th I think a, a Photoshop is a complicated program. I do think that Lightroom on the phone, though, is is actually pretty easy to learn. And if people were interested in getting a Lightroom tutorial, I would be really happy to do a half an hour or an hour and show you guys at another time just some very basic ways of using Lightroom to just sort of get get better pictures kind of instantly. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Marianne has a question. Yes. Um, thank you so much. Um, incredible photos. Um, my question is with Lightroom on the phone, your iPhone, did they change it? Don't you have to have everything as a raw photo to go into? No, no, you don't. No, uh, the, the pictures that I shoot on the phone are, are JPEGs or wow. that Apple format, H-E-I-C. I don't even know what that stands for, but no, I don't, I'm not shooting raw, uh, Marianne. I'm shooting JPEG. Okay, and then uh, the other question with with Lightroom, what, what I've seen, I'm, I'm better at Photoshop, Lightroom is, is a work in progress, but um, so when you print when you print your photos from Lightroom, do you ever kind of get into trouble because the way they're what I have found is that sometimes you get a little crazy in Lightroom and make them really really um, super contrasty or you know really pop, and then when you go to print them, you you don't get what yeah. you see on the screen. Yeah, um, that's a really good point. I think that anytime, anytime, not just in Lightroom, but anytime you're going from an electric medium with a, with a, with a, a backlit screen right. to a reflective paper medium, you're going to have to do iterations. It's just the way it is because your everyone's screens are set up differently. Uh, light luminance is different, so you're going to have to do two or three versions, you know, iterations, and you're going to get one back and say, "Oh shit, it's too contrasty," or or I have to, and that's a and Marianne, that's a lot like working in the dark room. You know, when I'd start on a negative in the dark room, I'd start with one one contrast grade of paper. I'd start with a two and a half, let's say, and I'd look at what came out, and I'd say, "Oh, I need I need more, uh, deeper blacks, or I need lighter," and then I'd switch uh, paper grades. I think that's a good analogy to to going from digital to any kind of print. You know, um, when people do books now. You know, uh, you, ha you still have to go on press and see what see what's coming off the press because the, the the what you see in InDesign or on a on a backlit computer screen just is different. I think you can get beautiful. I think you can make beautiful prints, but it's not it's not a one stop shop. I think it's an iterative process. Thanks. Yeah. I think Dennis has a question. Yeah, I think there's a what they call gamut function in uh, gamma. Yeah software packages that help you to determine when you do go a little you know, wild on your, your spectrum of vibrance or, or color saturation, you can check the gamut to see whether or not that's really an appropriate value for uh, transferring into a, another media like a paper or a, a print. Looks great on screen, like you said, but then it's just it's beyond the ability of the, of the system to, to manage all that. Yeah. So gamma check. All right. Anyone else? Uh, I don't have a. I don't have a question, but I just wanted to mention I appreciated you uh, explaining uh, about the composition, the diagonals, and the X's, and all that. I found that very interesting. How you look at the composition and see what direction the the flow of your eyes going in di diagonal and maybe x's i think that, that's something i learned tonight excellent yeah you know, you know so many so many pictures we we shoot that aren't that interesting are just shot flat and and yeah. i think the challenge is really to sort of um you know when i used to shoot film uh donald i loved shooting with a filter on the camera a red filter or, or, or a yellow filter because mm -hmm. it automatically changed it from reality. I'm not looking at reality anymore. I'm looking almost all, already oh, yeah. at a graphic image. Um, yeah. And I think really a lot of the challenge of these of these complex things that we see out in the world is how do you simplify the image so that when it when it goes down to 2D, it's it's beautiful and it's interesting and not just a a, a crap load of clutter, you know. Yeah. So, like you were saying about color being uh, cluttered at times. Yeah. 
You're making the black and white, it uh, really simplifies things. That's that's exactly right. Good choice, yeah. Yeah. But very interesting. Enjoy the presentation. Oh, good. Thanks. Hey, Velvie. Hi, Sandra. Uh, so my questions are less technical, maybe a little bit more emotional. Um, two or three observations. When you're traveling, do you ever get caught up in missing the moment versus staying in position and setting up for the perfect shot? You know, I love traveling unrushed, Sandra. Like Jenny and I went to, a, just spent a month in, in uh, Europe on her sabbatical and we had very few plans. So I, so I try not to rush around too much. And, and if I find something that, that is, a, is a good spot, um, I like to just, I'll, I'll sit there for 15 minutes or 20 minutes and wait for something to happen or, or um, and a lot of, yeah. So no, I don't worry. I don't worry about missing anything. That's not one of my, one of my, do you worry about that? I do, I do, and I actually have so few photographs of anything that I've done, including personal get-togethers. I'm so wrapped up and enjoying, and I feel like when I pull out the camera and start, the, one of the few things I'm happy I, I have video of is a Leonard Cohen concert that I went to in Vegas uh, before he passed away. And I'm so grateful that I have it now, but in the moment I'm like, fuck, I've missed 15 minutes of this show because yeah. I'm taping him. Well, that's one of the cool things about about having the iPhone. Also, I just pull it out and take a picture a lot of times, you know, and I think when you have a, a camera, you're really doing something more set up. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm talking out of both sides of my mouth here, but a lot of these pictures are just taken pretty, pretty, pretty quickly. Um, so it's not, you know, but yeah, I, I hear you. That leads but, to my next and, 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 and take a picture, not video. It goes much faster. True. Um, next question. How are you shooting much more frequently with the iPhone? How often do you pull out some other piece of equipment? Almost never. Uh, when, when's when's uh, the I'm, last I'm, time you shot on film? Film? It's probably been 15 years, Sandra. Yeah, I was going to say a decade. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but, I, but I shoot with the iPhone uh, pretty much every day. You know, and and I have I have really good cameras still that I use for video for for my pro video work, but I almost never shoot stills with a an SLR anymore. All right. Yeah. Oh, Velvy, you have a question. Sure. Um, how does how does doing videography uh, influence your photography eye and technique? I would say it goes the other way. I think I think that my photography influences the video work. Uh, I just I have done so much uh, darkroom work and compositional work that I have a really, I think a pretty developed sense of, of the frame. Um, so when I'm even when I'm shooting an interview shoot, I shoot a lot of interviews on video. And I'm not the cinematographer, by the way. I'm the I, I work with the cinematographer, but mm -hmm. when I am setting up those shots, I do an enormous amount of set dressing. You know, moving props around. Uh, where's the dark spots? Where's the light spots? To make sure that the composition is bringing you uh, to the person, but is also beautiful. Like even the even this thing that we're looking at right now. If you look at the ceiling above me, like I see this, I see these lines above me. And if I was on a video shoot right now, I'm like, oh, I want those lines, and I'm gonna I'm gonna lower the subject and kind of move the camera up like this so that the lines are gonna be interesting. You know, I'm I'm always mm -hmm. looking for for these kind of just little. So I think that I think the photography is actually influenced my video work much more. Mm -hmm. okay, Interesting. Uh, one additional question. Sure. If I may. Um, uh, when I shoot, oh, shoot, I tend to try to push the camera and do all the work in the camera. Um, and I, I mean, I have no judgment about anyone doing anything else in post, but I try to do all the work in the camera. I'd love to get something straight out of the camera, frame to print, and I'm done. Um, that's like a technical achievement and it's an artistic achievement and I try to shoot like that. Do you ever try to do that? No. Um, because you're so opposite. <laughs> no, I'm the exact, I, I, I shoot those pictures. And like I said, I don't know if you were here earlier, Stephen. Yeah, um, I saw the whole I, thing. I see that, that first click of the, of the pick of the things. It's like, oh, this has potential. This has potential. I, I um, and I'm going to work with it and try to make something beautiful because, um, and I have to say, most of the stuff that I shoot right out of the camera is not that beautiful. <laughs> <Just like that. laughs> Alexander has a question. Yeah, yeah. Alexander. I'm here, Steph. I mean, thank you. Hey, Bobby. I, I just wanted to just want to, 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 to just 
Westworld. See you, buddy. Nice to see you. Thanks for joining up. Thank you for having me. I, have, I, have, I, have, I, have, I don't have a, a, a question. I have just, just to just. Could just, right could just well, thank, thanks for saying hi. Comment. I love your pictures. Your pictures are all good. I love it. You, 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 are, you, you are doing the Favi. Thanks, Xander. I appreciate that. I'm glad you were here to see it. Thank you, Val. Looks like Terry has a question. Yeah, it's not as much as a question as just an appreciation of where you take your work. Um, I love to see an image, you know, just a raw image, flat or whatever it might be, and then to see the potential come out of it. Because often when I see a photo, I see something different than the camera sees. Hmm. You know, like you see with your clouds or you see with your lines and, and um, you know, it's it's like it's almost like I can't wait to get back to a screen to start working on it. <laughs> That's how I feel. <laughs> and work all, all those iterations until I get to something, you know, and I, I can take it's funny. I, I joke about the fact I'll take one photo every night and I may take an hour. I may take 10 minutes. I mean. And you just see where you're going to go with it. Yeah, you know? yeah. All kinds of different softwares or whatever it's whatever's at hand because mm -hmm. it's a it's a photo. It's photo art. Yeah, and I think you and I are you you and I are come from the same perspective, Terry. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Great, great presentation. Thank you. Yeah. Dennis has a question. And also, uh, not to overlook that in many cases there are more than one photographic opportunity in a given frame. Uh, the overall frame uh, construction with a bunch of people, a bunch of things going on. But if you start looking at spots in that frame, you might find a, a totally different setup or something that could be enlarged into its own photograph that is distinctly different from the rest of the, the balance. And I, I, so I enjoy taking a magnifying glass to my stuff and, and looking for things that I can really you know, accent, pull out the best, you know, that nugget that's sort of hiding in the rough. Dennis, um, what what resolution are you, are you shooting at a at a high enough resolution that you can actually take details and and they don't? Too much? Yeah, I usually shoot at uh, as low of a resolution as I can get, uh, like one hundred uh, on my uh, Nikon uh, D seven fifty. Before that, it was two hundred on my D ninety. I'm not. I'm not talking about ISO. I'm talking about actual actual oh. pixel size. Like how many oh, megapixels? I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, pixel size in raw. Because for for me with the iPhone, I don't really have like like once you start really blowing up, they kind of fall apart. You know, right. if I think about shooting with a higher res camera, uh, that that what you're suggesting is a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. I can't recall exactly. What. Yeah, but you're shooting with 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 a a, a DSLR that has a, a higher yeah. higher uh, pixel count. Right. Which is great. Yeah. Yeah. It makes a difference. Mallory. Come on, Mallory? Yeah. Hi. Hi, Hi Mallory. Mallory. Hi, Mallory. Hi. Nice um, to see you. Great shots. Thank you. All right. So what what stops you in the moment? Is it a feeling or a visual? It's almost um, always a, think, I'm sorry. It's almost always a visual, something I notice. You know, I just notice uh these things that I'm like, oh, that's a picture, or that's potentially a picture. It's it's almost always a visual. Uh, it's not a feeling. It's like it's a, it's an optical experience. <laughs> okay. Um, I I also I started the same way. I have a dark room in my basement, and I was doing black and white and triax, and and a, a, a poet friend of mine came over, and she wanted she wants to write poems. She started to write poems, and she said. So I have this box of, you know, all the mistakes. And mm -hmm. and she said, oh, those are your rewrites. Yeah. And it was really like very edits. cool yeah. to think But that. you know, Mallory, um, I, I used to love going to the dark room. Like I used to love being in the dark room and it took, you know, eight minutes to make one print. You know, you'd expose it, yeah. and then it was three minutes yeah, yeah, the developer yeah. and the fixer and 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 then uh, and stop bath. And, and then you'd look at it and then you turn the light on and then you'd make it. and time would just fly by you know yes. and 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 i lo actually loved that um yeah. being in that red room and have music on and, and um and god the experience now is so different like i shoot with the phone and the picture's done in five minutes you know yeah. there's no and, and and the good part about it is there's no chemistry there's no waste there's no 
toxicity. Uh, I like that aspect, but there was this beauty of really being in the dark and working it, on those pictures. To, yeah. That was that I I loved that that time. Yeah, it was meditation. Now I did yeah. the same thing. I broke all my black and white cameras that I would slap to wherever I was that were you know the Nikon F and then the yeah. um, Canons and stuff. And then um, and I'm not a color person, so I I perceive more in that black and white. But I had to switch to color when I did a digital when I was in India, which was kind of interesting. Mm. But now it's just iPhone. I mean, yeah. I do the same, it's the same journey. Yeah, yeah. so simple, cool. but it's not that time meditation thing that yeah. for me happens. It's like everything else, it's, it's much faster. It's the social media of, of photography now. Yeah. This well, thank, you. Yeah. thank you for your presentation. Oh, thanks, Mallory, I'm glad you were here. Me too. Roy or Roy? Roy? Yeah, hi. Um, thanks for your presentation, I like your photos. <laughs> I noticed that there's sort of an infinite depth of field and then maybe that's an iPhone feature. It kind of reminds me of old Minox photo yes. photographers. Uh, so, uh, you know, it made me, I go the opposite way. I love big, wide open depth of field lenses where I can blur the background. And I wonder if you ever think about focal lengths. Yes, I, I do actually. Um, and you know, when I shoot video, we shoot with prime lenses wide open, one four, one two, and we get, we get the shallowest depth of field possible. Right. Um, a lot of times now when I, the iPhone doesn't, I mean, I guess the newer iPhones do have a portrait mode where, where that, that, that sort of digitally um, uh, uh, recreate uh, uh, bokeh and, and depth and shallow depth of field. Um, one of the things that I've been doing quite a bit of lately is, again, in one of these, these Adobe products is uh, after I've actually um, edited the photo and I've gotten it where I like it, I exported it and I then import it into one of their other Adobe programs called Photoshop Camera, and they have these filters in there that are portrait filters that will that will recreate a very shallow depth of field. Um, and Amazing. Um, sometimes they work great. Sometimes they don't work so great. They don't. Um, and the other thing that I've noticed, which is a negative that I've I've asked my wife to sort of complain about at Adobe, is that once the, once the pictures go through a, a, a Photoshop Camera, they come out half the size. They're no longer 4K pictures. They're now they're now uh, even less than HD, and that's sort of a bummer. Um, but yes, I I uh, I also love the the wide open um, wide open um, lens look. So good for you. <laughs> Do you ever did anybody ever notice or mention that? Yeah, uh, yeah I am reminded of when I wa uh, watch you talk of Bradley Whitford. I don't even know who that is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll leave it there. He was on the but, West. But people Thank often you. tell me that I look like someone else. I hear that a lot. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Nice presentation. Thank you much. Well, thank you, Rep. I'm glad you're here. Okay. Sandy Hanger, no questions from you? Come on. I'm shy. Uh, <laughs> and I, I can say things and ask questions when it's just one on one. But, okay, but I, I just loved uh, you have now answered all the questions that I had for you before. Oh, good. I asked you individually. And I especially like the how you're talking about how you break up the frame. And um, in teaching film, uh, you know, I talk about the triangles that the cinematographer will get within the frame. And that's that's what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the only thing that you ever answered for me was, um, I, I asked you, how can you get like twice as much as I get in m the frame of my iPhone? And you said, you directed me to um, something that makes it half the size, makes the frame half the size. And I've started, but it still didn't look like your photos. <laughs> well, so you're not I'm, me. Up, I'm up for <laughs> your I'm photos up, look like your photos. <laughs> I'm up for lessons on Lightroom. Okay, we could do that. Uh, I'd be happy to, Sandy. Could I share a quick? Um, so we have our challenge every month, a little photo challenge, and I'd love to have Belby talk about it real quick. So I'm going to share my screen. Here, here, bear with me here. And bear with me. Sorry, I'm having a hard night technically. <laughs> I only do this constantly. There we go. So
So here's our photo challenge for anybody that wants to, to give it a shot. And you want to talk about it, Billy? Yeah, you know, this came up a lot uh, in, in, in my presentation, but a lot of people commented on it, uh, even in the questions. Um, I thought, here's, a, here's just a, a nice exercise. Try to find some lines and, and, and bring, bring some compositions out of the corners of, of, a, of, a, of a few pictures. Um, you know, try to simplify a, a complex shape by bringing line. This, you know, this is something that I've just learned how to do and it seems like a, a, worthy, a worthy exercise. Uh, if you like, if you like what you saw today, I guess. But um, but uh, this is one that that uh, that I. It's just exactly that. So a demonstration. Does that make sense to you all? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I'll post that on Facebook. So we'd love to see everybody's attempt. And Mallory has another question. No, no. I just, I just wanted to say I just took a photo of the assignment for. Awesome. <laughs> Oh, I'll Mallory, your Mallory, your background right now could be one of those pictures. I was thinking you were thinking that. <laughs> I'm going to share some stuff in the chat. Feel free to download. And Dennis has a, has his hand up. Yes, <clears throat> on that shot that you you just showed for that example, did you notice the curves in that uh, in that structure? Yeah, the main uh, beams that go down. That's very peculiar uh, to, exactly. to me. Uh, like um, maybe they're pitch curve uh, glue laminated they, beams. They are actually curved. They're gigantic, mm -hmm. and they're mm -hmm. and they're it's not one piece. There, mm -hmm. there's a curve, and then there's then then they're cabled together. Um, that bridge is the, is the oldest covered um, non suspension bridge in the world, mm -hmm. um, and it's it's in um it's uh, uh, in Bridgeport. Um, and they they were refurbishing it for probably the last ten years, and it just reopened about a year ago. <clears throat> yeah, and bit... if you're ever up there, it's it is spectacular. And a, a lot of it's what you're talking about, Dennis, is like that the wood is in fact uh, curved, um, mm -hmm. and it's beautiful. Yeah, very unusual. Yeah. Thank you. Patricia has her hand up. Sylvia, it's fun to thank you for. I love the way you put the presentation together because. Oh, thanks, Pat. Yeah, it, it showed me, you know, starting out with who your kind of teachers were, and it introduced me to uh, particularly the W. Eugene Smith, and I didn't get the Car Cartier's last name. Uh, Henry Cartier-Bresson. Bresson. Uh, and, and if you look up uh, the decisive moment, that's kind of what, what he's famous for, is pictures that, that have that. The, the, so if you just look up, just Google the decisive moment, it'll, it'll be all uh, Henry Cartier-Bresson. And uh, thank you, I will. And um, you inspired me. I used to love to take photos, and I stopped. I, uh, you know, just and you've really, you've really touched my heart and inspired me to. to it's just thrilling. It's just thrilling looking. All right. At you. Well, now you got to send me some pictures, Pat. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Wonderful. All right, everybody. So just reminders, a couple reminders. Let me know by Monday if you want to be part of our photo show. I know a lot of people came in late, so um, would love more people to be involved. And I also added in the chat the flyer for next month's speaker, Dennis Englander, who's here tonight. And um, what else? There was one more thing I was going to mention. I guess that's it. Question. One more question from Dennis. Uh, on that photo show, uh, the exhibit, I guess let's call it that exhibit you're mentioning, the sizes have that has that been determined yet? It has not, and we're gonna we're gonna be doing it in my studio, so I need to kind of feel out how many people are gonna be involved. And I also know that Donald has quite a nice setup to sell stuff, and I I want to make that an opportunity for people too. So once I gather everything and get as much information as I can, um, I'd like as many people to be able to sell and um, show as much as they can. So um, if you have like a, a like a what do you call that? If there's like a display with, that has a whole bunch of prints for sale that Donald has. I think it's really nice setup. And then I have bookshelves that maybe somebody could put 
um, a bunch of their stuff. And I am going to keep a lot of my work up already so that I can promote my studio at the same time. So, but, but we have two rooms. So, and, and a big piece of this is going to be the more people we have, the more people I think will come because then we can all heavily promote, share it with our friends. And, and what so about, do you, I'm sorry. But what about anchoring? Like if we have a frame that has an existing wire on it, we use a standard. You know, we don't, we don't. And that is something we're gonna have to figure out. Um, maybe easels, I have one concrete wall, so we have to kind of figure out how to make that work. And mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna call upon all of you to help me figure this out because um, aside from the art walk, we haven't really had a lot of shows in there other than my work, so. I'm super open. Yeah, Valerie. Do you know how many uh, shots you want and how big or that they should or should not be? We're gonna figure that out after Monday okay. um, when we see how many people are wanting, to, how many people want to um, join us. Okay, do you want, do you want, when, how and when do you wanna know? By Monday, I put a flyer in the chat that you can download, and I'll also add everything again on Facebook. Okay, I'll do it on Facebook. I'll do it. Yeah, and I would love it if you just send me an email. I'm super busy right now with work, so if you can send me email saying I want to be part, and maybe Belvi will join us too. I hope so. All right. Quick question: Did you could you just quickly tell us the dates for the show yeah sure the dates are going to be well monday is our our deadline to let me know and yeah. um december 2nd and 3rd um i thought friday night maybe we could have a cocktail party and then saturday we could try to get people in off the streets to come look and buy our work perfect it gets pretty busy downtown on saturday and again, I'm open to suggestions and ideas. All right. Well, that was fun. <laughs> yeah. We had Thank that, you. Most, this is the most people we've had. Oh, <laughs> could you all help me with something real quick? Um, I have to take roll for uh, Park and Rec because they like to see how many people have come through. Stephen, is he here? Where's Stephen from? Anybody know? Steve Zagas. Alameda. Yeah. Where? Alameda. Alameda. How about Roy? 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 Um, uh, one of my best friends in the world is Sandy Hancher. We know each other from California, but now I live in Guatemala, so I'm sure oh, I'm the furthest away. All right. Awesome. Oh. And Marianne, where are you, where are you from? Did she leave? Oh, darn. Oh, I'm here. Uh, okay. All the way from San Rafael. Oh, exotic. <laughs> Alexander is in West Marin, right? He's in, in, he's in Woodacre. Woodacre. Allison, how about you? Are you still here? Anyone know? Allison's in the city. Oh, Allison Brown, San Francisco, yeah. And Jean? Jean is in, um, he's in Auburn, I think. Alina, you're Sam and Selma, right? She leave? Oh, she's gone. Um, Patricia, how about you? Dan Bruno, for you. Cool. Dennis, I forget where you're from. San Francisco. And Liz, is she from Fairfax? Liz Pisco? Uh, Kyberg? Oh, Liz, yeah, she's uh, uh, Fairfax. Okay, and Raven, where are you right now? You? Raven's gone, I'm done. Oh, um, I think she's 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 I'm not gone, I'm here. Oh, where are you living right now? Or where are you? Well, actually, um, I'm in Portland, Oregon. I've been um, dog sitting for a month. I'll be here till uh, mid-November and then I'll be back in the Bay Area um, November 15th. And my last one is Diane Peterson. Oh. <laughs> Anyone know? Yeah. Fans in Fairfax. Fairfax. Okay, great. Yeah. Sorry about that. I just, I, they like to know 
where everybody's coming from. So, ta-da! Dugan <laughs> was here, and he's from Nevada. Who? Mike Dugan. I think I got him already. Let's. It was a big. It was a big crowd today, though. This was the yeah. most we've ever had, Belby. Twenty-four. I counted at one time. Wow. Got up twenty-nine. Uh, Listen. Um, you got twenty-nine. Okay. It, it, it was really fun for me. I, I I've never done anything like this before, and it was really cool to pull together all those pictures and try to make sense of it somehow. And and I think I got a better perspective on myself <laughs> uh, <laughs> having done it today. So thank you, Stephanie. Um, well, you can take it, take it on the road now, Val. Yeah. Yeah, now, now, I've got, now I've got a 200 slide deck. <laughs> is this being Run. recorded, Stephanie? Yes. I, I missed it. I actually hit the record 15 button. minutes. Great. Okay. Yeah. It'll be worth watching again, definitely. So, yeah. That was a lot of Great fun. presentation. Enjoyed it Thanks, a lot. Yeah. Thanks, Arnold. It, yeah. it was wonderful, Valdi. Excellent. Yeah. Well, thank you all for your your kind attention. I I, I really am flattered, and uh, and I, I had a great time. It was it was super fun. Thanks for your talent and sharing it. Yep. All job. right, thank you, Stephanie. Bye, Good night, y'all. Bye. Bye. Yeah, thanks, buddy. Bye. 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 Bye.